world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 149 of my poker vlog. For this one, same as the usual, we are busting out content at the 2-5 table, Sarasota, one Eye Jacks Poker Club. Let's go over some hands. We start off this day at the 1-3 table like we normally do when we arrive early on the first hand of note. An early position player raised a $15. I call it middle position, and the big blind calls as well, so we end up going three ways to a flop. When the flop comes 10-8-6 rainbow, I think queen jack is pretty good to have here. Have a gut shot, have two overs, have a lot of playability. So when the early position player continues for $20, I'm happy to continue. If I make a pair, I can often have the best hand, and I can often raise with any king or ace that comes on the turn. They're definitely bluff out. When this specific opponent takes this line, I actually expect them to have a lot of 10x in their range, so pretty happy with my exact hand. When I make the call, the big blind decides to fold, so we end up going heads up to a turn card, which is the Ace of Diamonds. One of the cards I'm very happy to see, I expect this to go check, bet, fold, and I just win. But my opponent continues for $25. Kind of a smallish sizing, you know, 20 on the flop, 25 now. Feels kind of weak, honestly. It makes me think that my opponent has a 10 that just doesn't want to give up, but I'm also not going anywhere with my exact hand, so I make the call. The river is the bink nine of clubs. We river the actual nuts. Tell the truth. How proud do you feel at this moment? And this time my opponent checks to me. When my opponent only has like 75 to $80 behind, like I don't think there's a sizing I can go besides all in here. If I had an ace x here, I'd probably want to bet here, put a 10 in a bad position. If I had like king queen and whiffed, I might try to turn my hand into a bluff as backdoor diamonds missed. So we're just going to jam here and it didn't seem to make much of a difference. My opponent folds very quickly, so probably not getting any more value on that one. But nice to river the nuts. Nearly $225 at 1-3. We're really crushing this 1-3 lately before a next hand of note. I'm under the gun, I raise pocket sixes to $15, plus one calls before the button raises to 60. And now the small blind calls. When it folds back to me, something that I've learned from pokercoaching.com is that when calling a three bet, you definitely want to have hands that flop the nuts or pretty strong. So pocket sixes actually functions a lot better than like ace, queen, ace, jack in a calling three bet scenario. So thinking my hand's very easy to play, I flop a set, I win, or I just get a board I don't like and I could just fold. This is going to be a good spot to continue. When I make the call, the other limper calls as well. So we end up going four ways to a flop of 3-3 three, three, deuce rainbow. When small blind checks to me, I briefly consider leading here. It's hard to have an over pair with sixes, so when you have one, it's pretty strong. Every other opponent really should never have a three in range, where I can have ace three some of the time, I can have ace four, pocket deuces. I believe I actually have the strongest range of hands on this board, but I'm going to perceive this as just a check call in flow. When it checks back to the button, he bets $65. I'm probably going to call this one down as I expect this opponent to have a lot of ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack hands, to which this is a pretty good board for sixes. So if fold to me, I'm definitely going to call him down. But to my surprise, the small blind calls. When the small blind cold calls the three bet and then calls the flop bet, I really just peg him to eights, nines, tens. Jacks, maybe, although this player may four bet jacks, but... I really just think he has a middling pocket pair that's higher than sixes at this point. So it would have called down if it was me, but with this action, I think I can just let this one go. Gonna fast forward a bit. Turn seven, it goes check, check. River six of diamonds, I would have binged a full house. And it goes check, check again. Small blind shows pocket tens, and the button said he had ace high. So I include this hand because I felt pretty good that I accurately identified both players' ranges pretty spot on and i don't say that as after the fact seeing the cards i really thought that these opponents had exactly what they had so felt pretty good about it and if the small blind's not in there i probably win this hand but you know we move on now we're at the two five table a middle bush player opens to 25 dollars. i'm in the cutoff with king queen off suit i make the call we are heads up to a flop of jack eight four rainbow my opponent actually checks dark which okay Seems weird to be an aggressor and then check dark, but I'm just going to bet against that whole range. This opponent just likely has a weak hand and is trying to gain some kind of positional advantage by checking dark, but I'm not going to have any of that. I bet $25. My opponent calls, so actually I think he has like a jack here a lot of the time, so hoping to improve on the turn. 
turn is the jack of spades pretty bad when he checks to me absolutely not putting any more money on this i could be drawing dead i check it back could bluff out some 8x hands on the river until the river is the eight of diamonds now we lose to absolute everything my opponent bets like 55 60 dollars something like that i'm not calling with king high this one just didn't work out Following that, I'm on the button with ace-queen offsuit. I raised to $20 when it folds to me. Small blind is the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of 995 rainbow. As this is a board where I'm likely very far ahead, you can actually value bet some ace highs here and protect against your opponent's entire misses. But I'm going to check this one back, try to get closer to showdown, play in position. And when the turn is the nine of hearts, three nines on board, I'm definitely going to bet this one. I feel like I'm value betting ace high here, looking for calls from weaker hands. So I bet $20. When my opponent called, I actually changed my mind completely and just thought he was pegged for a five. So when the king of spades come, there are some cards where I would check back and take shot on value. But I really think I have to just rep ace king here and get a random 5x to fold here. So we're going to go relatively big with this one. We put $60 in the middle, hoping to put a 5 in a terrible spot. And we actually get pocket 6s to lay it down. So the king was actually a very helpful river card. If I have ace-queen here, I have ace-king the same way. So this one worked out pretty well. After that, I'm under the gun with ace-10 off suit. I raised $20. The cutoff is the only call, so we end up going heads up to a flop of 10-6 deuce 2 spades. We're not going to get in any fancy play syndrome. We have top pair, top kicker. We are going to bet half pot. I bet $20. My opponent calls very quickly. Turn is the Jack of Diamonds. Jack 10, one of the hands that I was beating on the flop now completes. Otherwise, not too many jacks should just be peeling here. Maybe some Jack X of spades. Either way, we're going to go for one street of pot control and turn into a check call. When I check, my opponent checks it back. River is the eight of clubs. My specific opponent on this one can happily call with second or third pair. So I'm actually going to bet here. I could bluff catch here if my opponent wanted to turn Miss Spades into a bluff. But I also think he'll pay off a bet with like a 6, an 8, like 8, 9, maybe 10 queen. Plenty of hands I can actually get value from that I think would check back. So I bet $35 and my opponent quickly folds. So no additional value, but like going for some thin value on this one. After that... I button straddle, and the under-the-gun player raises to 20. I assume he did not see the straddle, because otherwise, kind of a strange sizing. But when a mill position player calls, 10 more bucks, king six of clubs seems reasonable, so I make the call. Three ways to 764 all diamonds. We flop middle pair, but the preflop aggressor continues for $20. When it folds to me, this is just going to be a pure float. I expect my opponent to have a lot of ace, x, as well as some, like, 10 jack, 1 diamond, king, queen, 1 diamond, things such as that. So we're just going to float and try to take this one down on the turn. This flop is much better for my range. I have all the flop straights, flop two pairs, flop sets. So when I make the call, the turn is the ace of clubs. And when my opponent checks to me, plan is put into action. It almost doesn't matter what the turn card is. I bet $75. Just thinking I have all the flopped made hands and my opponent shouldn't have too many of them. And even if I had just the naked ace of diamonds, if my opponent had single diamond holdings, he's drawing almost dead. So when I make the $75, he quickly folds and we take down one with a pretty nice bluff. Next hand of note. I'm under the gun. I raise to $15 with pocket fives. A later position player raises to 60. The big blind calls and is back to me. Similarly to the pocket sixes hand, fives is a great three bet calling candidate. It can flop monsters, it can flop the nuts, and if it does, you have the potential to win a massive pot. When I call the $60, I'm really hoping to flop a five, but I do not. Instead, I flop two of them on 1055 rainbow. And seeing that flop feels just like. It's like 2.2, right? So, flop the actual nuts. No way to play this hand bad. Strangely, the big blind leads for $150. Okay, that's $150 coming to me. But I have to tank for a little bit. Hopefully, the pre-flop 3 better has, like, jacks plus. If he had, like, queens, kings, aces, he's definitely going to call or maybe even raise if I just make the call here. 
So definitely want to keep him in this hand as well. After a bit of thinking, I call because that's what I think is the only option at this point. The preflop three better pretty quickly folds. Disappoint because he had the much bigger stack. Really trying to get him in there, but we're going to complain. We flop quads. It's even better as my opponent tries to jam before the turn is even revealed and dealer has to kind of slow him down, pull out the turn, pull the cards in. Once we finally confirm it is a jam, I just call and show the fives. No need to make him show. I'm just going to win. Turn, nine of hearts, river, deuce of hearts. So not much changes on this board. And at Sarasota, one eye jacks, any quads gets paid $599 and a table share of $50 a piece. So we get a promotion bonus on top. What a massive hand to win. And this is after the promotion bonus is paid out, stays on the table. We have a massive chip stack into this game for only 1k. Have probably 2.2 in front of us. Feels great. Please take a moment and like the video. Thank you. Before the next hand of note. Middle position raised to 20. There's one call. I look down at ace king off. This one's going to be a three bet. I think 100 to 105 is the best number. But I end up going a little bit smaller, $95. Don't think it's too big of a mistake, but either way, both players kind of slowly fold, and we pick up about 40 some dollars pre-flop. No risk needed. Feels pretty good. Still trending in the right direction. The next hand of note, I'm in the big blind with pocket jacks. With one limp, the cutoff raises to $30. This opponent is pretty tight. He's played maybe three or four hands across the entire day, so I'm going to proceed with a little bit of caution. And just make the call. Additionally, we want to play smaller pots out of position, bigger pots in position. So think a call is warranted in this scenario. The limper calls as well. So we go three ways to a 6-3 deuce, two diamond board. I check in flow. Checks to the pre-flop aggressor. He bets $35 after a very long tank. But I'm going to raise right now. If he has queens plus, we're just going to learn about it right now. Otherwise, we get all of his ace to fold. I could have 4-5 here. I could have pocket sixes. My over pair of jacks, I think, is good enough to raise and just take it down. Save myself any difficult decisions on later streets. When I make it $135, the limp caller calls that. And then the preflop aggressor folds. This is quite a bad situation for me because this opponent could easily have 4-5, 3 deuce, and he's set. You know, he's a limp caller. He's got a... His range is somewhat even stronger than mine on this board. But as played, I think my opponent has diamond draws a lot of time too. Eight, nine of diamonds, ace four of diamonds, things like that. So I'm going to proceed with some caution. When the five of hearts is the turn card, there were some turn cards where I was going to bet, but he could easily have six, four, three, four, any of that. My hand has a bunch of showdown value. So I'm going to check, hopefully get one step closer to showdown. My opponent checks it back. The turn is the nine of clubs. I'm actually pretty confident I have the best hand here, but if my opponent has missed diamonds, he's never going to call a bet, but he might bet himself. Additionally, if he has a straight or a two pair, he would definitely call a bet, maybe even raise, so I think check calling is the best line to take in this spot. When I check, my opponent snap checks back and shows queen five of diamonds. So he had a small amount of showdown value, and that's why we did not get a bet on the river, but either way, we'll take it with jacks. feel like this hand was played pretty well by both players. All right, this hand is probably the most educational one of this vlog. I bunched trail at $10. Under the gun slash small blind makes it 40. Big blind calls, the literal under the gun position calls. Now it's on me, 30 to win 160 with queen five of hearts. Suited queen, things good enough to peel here. And when I make a somewhat loose peel, I get rewarded on a queen, queen, eight rainbow board. Small blind checks, and now that big blind bets $100, and it folds back to me. This opponent in specifically was telling a story to the player next to him and paused to stop to bet this $100, so alarm bells are already going in my head that he has a strong hand. Additionally, this is maybe the second hand I've seen him play in three hours, so not feeling great about the situation yet, but we're going to take all that information moving forward, but we're not folding just yet. We're definitely calling. Turn is the king of clubs, and my opponent bets $165. Still getting a good price. There are some high cards on the river that would let me chop with better queens. Like if an ace came, I now chop with queen jack, queen 10. So still pretty happy to just call this 165. But when I call, the river is the four of diamonds. 
Hoped it was a five. Would have been great to be a five. So close to a five. But it's a four. Now my opponent bets $500. And it's on me. I need answers. I need to determine where in this swamp of unbalanced formulas squatteth the toad of truth. Like, when you look at this board, I don't even think there's bluff candidates to have on this board. Let alone if my opponent has the ability to bluff. Like, the only hand I'm beating is if my opponent basically just looked down at jack 10 of clubs and then decided to blast off on this flop, continue on the turn, and not give up on the river. Besides that, I lose to pretty much everything. The hand that kind of sticks out to me is pocket eights here. I think that hand plays this exact same way. Because if my opponent had a queen, I don't really expect him to bet so large on the river because he blocks all the hands that I could have that would pay three streets. So, I mean, I don't know. I think I lose to everything. This opponent's had like a 0% aggression factor. Now he's going three streets. I have basically a bluff catcher to a better queen pocket eights. So, I just let this one go. Let me know what you would have done in the comments below. All the information I've told you is what I can share. Additional nugget is maybe an hour later, this exact opponent had pocket kings on like a jack high unconnected board. And only one bet went in across all three streets of the hand. So this kind of aggression, I assume he just had a better hand. And I think I made a decent fold. But let me know what you think in the comments. A final hand of note. I button straddle with two limps. I just raised to $35, ace 10 off suit. Seems reasonable, trying to build a pot and make it $35. Both limpers call, and the flop comes ace 7-4, two spades. A middle position player leads out for $20, and with these weakish small leads, they tend to usually be draws that are trying to name their price, get to later streets in the hand as cheaply as possible, so I'm absolutely not going to let that happen. I raised to $80 right now. Should have the best hand a decent percentage of the time. My opponent can have 5-6 spades three deuce all kinds of stuff sometimes this raise actually gets folds for me but not this time my opponent makes the call and the turn is the jack of spades when the most obvious draw that i actually put my opponent on gets there when he checks to me I, i'm just gonna check this back not a very good turn card and the river is the four of clubs now my opponent bets 100 dollars, and it's super irritating because i thought that i got all the money and while i had the best hand i get turned pretty stone dead i don't even have the ace of spades so my opponent could actually theoretically have like ace five with just the ace of spades and do this you know no longer kicker problems with the paired board and the jack but i don't know against this particular person i really just thought he made a flush and is kind of going somewhat thin with it as the board paired you know i really didn't expect him to to bet if the board paired like this but either way after a Decent amount of thinking. I just decided this is a fold. I probably don't have the best hand. And I'm kind of happy that I did. My opponent had pocket fours. So river quads. And as mentioned before, this is a $599 bonus for this player. I get 50 bucks because the table, each player gets $50. So great promotions at Sarasota. Come on down. So we lost a little since this pitcher was taken. Had some hands go the other direction. But we're into the game for $1,000. Out of the game for $1,850 which is a profit of $850 across four hours equates to $212 an hour or 42 big blinds an hour. Yeah, this session definitely defined by making quads, stacking a player, and getting a $600 high hand bonus changes the results quite a bit. However, on the flip side, I would say if I call the river with my queen five of hearts and get shown the bad news, this definitely becomes more of a break even day than a winning day so i'm still quite happy with my fold on that particular hand still interested to see what you all would say in the comments below about it but as always if you made it to this point i appreciate it and there'll be more content coming in a few days thank you